welcome back, people, um, to the second part of this uh, lesson. Now, uh, now that we've finished our design in Photoshop, what we want to do is we want to prepare it to prepare it to pre to put into After Effects so that we can add some animation to it. Okay, so we're going to go from Photoshop to into After Effects to animate this uh, design. Now, to prepare it, um, what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, just tidy up our layers, okay? So I'm going to throw this text layer in the bin because we might add the text in After Effects so that we can animate it nicely. Um, the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to undo these uh, clipping masks, all right? So you'll need to release all the clipping masks because that will create a problem when we um, add it into After Effects. I'm not sure if I can do them all at once. I might just try that. Release clipping mask. There we go. That's great. Um, there we go. Now, we're going to go down here, because I'm not using these textures, I'm just going to delete them. Okay, so we're tidying up our layers. Now, the, the adjustment layer here, we want to merge with the, um, with the, with the uh, background layer. So, hold, select the background layer, hold shift and select the curves layer, right click and merge the layers there so that they became one. And let's rename it just BG background. Okay, um, the rectangle layer is okay. Um, this one, the clipping mask needs to be released on that. Release the clipping mask. And now the next thing, all we need to do now is um, you'll notice I've got three separate drums that I had, I, I did have them linked up. Um, if you want to animate, if you've got something like that and you want to be able to move them around separately, you can leave them as is. But um, for this example, I'm just going to select all three of them and I'm going to merge them together so that they're just one, one layer. Okay, um, and the other thing we need to do is, uh, just to make it a little bit easy, we're going to rasterize these layers. So right click them and rasterize them. That way they're not going to be editable uh, in uh, After Effects. Rasterize, there we go. Rasterize layer. We don't need to do it for the rectangle, that's okay. Um, and now the last thing to do is let's just name the layers properly. So um, let's call this Guitar Guy. Only because when we put these into After Effects, it makes it a lot easier to figure out where things are. Okay, and let's call this Singer. And wait a minute, what is this one? Oh, that's the microphone, actually. That's the separate microphone with the Singer, so I need to, I'm going to merge these two again. And Singer. There we go, and Command S, say, uh, actually, not Command S, uh, what you want to do is, we want to save as, file save as, because um, we'll just give it a different name, like you name it, whatever, uh, maybe just hot type after the file name, AE after it, to, to show that this is the one we're going to use in After Effects, in our file name, and just click save, All right, so, okay, now that we're ready to um, add this into After Effects, let's go ahead and open the program up. Um, and this is a program we can use to um, uh, create moving graphics or motion graphics and we can also use After Effects to create uh, video, special effects for video, movies and clips. Alright, now when you open After Effects, whether yours looks like this or not, um, sorry this is going to bother me, um, I'm just going to click on New Project or you can go to File, New Project, doesn't matter. Now over here in this section, if you double click, all right, this is where we're going to import our Photoshop document into this project. Now, that's our one. The, the, that's the one I saved there. And the only thing you need to do is import as, change footage to uh, composition, retain layer sizes. So that's going to bring all the individual layers uh, into After Effects like they are set up in Photoshop. Okay, and we can... Uh, then go to animate them. So click OK. This box will come up. Just click OK, and you'll notice up here there's a comp that relate. That's the composition in the folder. It shows all the layers in the composition. Simply double click the little icon here, and uh, then our Photoshop document is now in After Effects ready to go. You'll notice uh, over down here we've got our layers and 
because we renamed them, um, it's going to make it a lot easier for us. Now, if yours comes in like this with the uh, title safe area, the, this grid here, just click down here and just take off the guides like that. It's a little bit easier to see. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is we want to recreate uh, the clipping mask that we had here so that when we animate them, they're inside that mask. So uh, let's go to do that. Um, what we want to do is we want to have uh, our rectangle layer. Okay, we want to uh, duplicate it or copy it. So get it, select it, go to edit and duplicate. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to put it above uh, the guitar guy layer. Okay, we're going to do this, repeat this a few times for each of the different people there. So once that's done, select the guitar guy. Okay, then over here in your track mat, uh, we want to select this option uh, alpha mat rectangle 2. Okay, and that's going to basically clip him inside. Uh, the rectangle, uh, the shape that like we had in Photoshop so that we can move him around in there. Okay, now if you don't have this, all right, just hit this button here and that toggles that uh, track mat on and off. Okay, now again, let's do the same thing. Let's, uh, we can't right click. Let's go to select the rectangle layer, edit, duplicate. We've got another one. Now let's click, hold and drag and change the order of it. Put it above the drum. Okay, and again, let's select the drum layer. Let's go to the track mat and uh, track it to or clip it to uh, rectangle three. Okay, and one more time, edit, duplicate, or you could do Command D as a quick shortcut there, uh, and pop it on top of the singing layer, and then select the singer or whatever layer you're using and select that. Okay, so now we have put them all inside the shape, just like we had in Photoshop. So the next thing we'll do is add some animation to um, our our uh, individual graphics here. So the first thing we might do is we might just lock down the layers that we're not going to use uh, at the moment, just to make things easier. So I'm going to work on the guitar guy first. All right, so let's lock all these layers because he's the only layer, even the background that I'm going to use. Uh, we might also hide these other layers so that we don't get uh, so that they're so that they're uh, out of the way just by clicking the eye on and off. All right, so now I've just isolated this is the only thing that I can move and select. So what we might do is I might start him maybe here, okay, off the screen, and we're going to get him to kind of come animate in really fast and then the animation will slow down a bit and then we're going to let him zip off the uh away from the shape and out of the out of the screen okay now we're just going to use some simple position keyframes to do this all right so uh over here you'll notice i've got a timeline mine is set to eight seconds that's probably a good number if yours is set to 10 or something like that what you can do is you can go into composition um, and you can go to composition settings and all you need to do is change the duration here from whatever yours is to eight seconds okay eight seconds is pretty good okay for this and then click ok and it'll be eight seconds now what we want to do is we want to hit the little triangle here to open up our transform controls and we've got one for position in here. Now anytime we want to um, animate an effect we use keyframes and to activate the, uh, and to activate them just click the stopwatch and you'll notice in the timeline here a little keyframe appears. So at this point in time uh, our guitar guy is down here. Now uh, up over here uh, if you just it's nice to keep these tidy. If you've got a lot open, maybe you just kind of tight close them. If you go into preview, we've got this button here. This will go forward a frame. So um, we might go through forward maybe four frames. One, two, three, four. Remember, one second of footage is about 24 or 25 frames per second, depending on your settings. You won't check it at the moment. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click, hold, and drag and move this graphic straight up. And if you want it straight up, you can hold shift and it will kind of go straight up. I might move him up to about here. All right, and then what's going to happen um, if I just press play, it's just going to come in from the bottom really quick. Okay, now I might go up to maybe the three second mark. I'll take the play hit up here and I'm going to add a keyframe here. Okay, but no change has occurred yet because I haven't moved anything. Now, if you do move your playhead off the keyframe, just go over here, click that, and you can scroll through your keyframes and then you can uh, then change the parameters. Or the values over here. Now, what? Oh, not over there. Or oh, you can change them here. Or you can change them from here. Now, what we might do is I'm just going to kind of move him up a little bit. So if I hold Shift and push him up, I've got to select him first and hold Shift. So I'll probably push him up. I don't want to push him up too far because 
his leg gets lost, so maybe about to here. All right, so you can see now these two keyframes zoom in really quick, and then he's going to slow down and kind of uh, fade up like that. And that's it. Now he stops. Now what we might do is we might just zoom him out really quickly. So if we go back to that keyframe and we move forward, let's keep it consistent by going one, two, three, four keyframes. And let's grab him and push him off. So he zooms off the side of the composition. And let's have a look at how that looks. So he zips in. And he zips out really quick. Now you'll notice he kind of curves a little bit. If yours does that, what you can do is you can just click on the um, the anchor points a little bit like Illustrator or Photoshop using the pen tool, and you just grab the handles and you can kind of straighten that up a bit. Okay, if you don't want too much curve there. All right, let's go back to the start and let's preview it. There he is, and that's it. Okay. Now the other thing you should do is is if you uh, highlight these keyframes like that, draw a marquee around them, right click them and go to keyframe assistant and just choose easy ease. Do that when you're finished and then what that will do is it just kind of eases the uh, positional effect in instead of it happening all of a sudden. You can preview it like that. You probably can't notice it unless you look closely but yeah that's it. Now what you can then do is um, you can then lock down the guitar guy all right, and then uh, you could go to the next one, the singer. Let's hot, let's show him there, and we you can do go back into, and you can just basically do the same thing. Okay, um, what I might do is I might get all this done, and then I'll show you the next step. Now, um, now that that's all done, if you do have time, you could experiment with, um, you know, going into the singer layer here. Um, you've also got other uh, things, values you can keyframe, such as the scale, the rotation, and the opacity. So, for example, um, if I wanted uh, the singer here, I think I'm on, to kind of rotate a little bit slightly as it animated in we could just see set keyframes exactly the same that we did with the position if we want it if I wanted him to kind of maybe slowly zoom in or slowly be zooming out smaller you can just add keyframes in the same way that we did before all right now um, the next thing we're going to do is we might just tidy our composition up a little bit um, so let's just unlock all these um, and we're going to add some text to it but to make things a little bit cleaner. We've got a lot of layers going on here, so we might do something called pre-composing uh, what we've already created. And basically all that does is just going to create like a group for it. It's going to group everything together in, a, in its own folder, but it's called pre-composing in After Effects. So select all your layers, and then if we go to uh, composition, no it's edit, no it's not, it's layer, right down the bottom of layer, you can click on pre-compose. Um, you could give it a name if you wanted, you don't really need to it, or adjust any of the settings, just click OK. And now um, you can see that our footage is now pre-composed. So uh, in the main timeline, we have just our animation that we created, um, but we can't really play around with it. We can play with a whole, we can go into here and transform controls and play with a whole lot. But to get all our work back, you just double click this icon here, and then here's all the, um, all our, of our Photoshop layers back and the animations that we added to them. Okay, I'll just close that one so you can go back and forth between the main comp and your folder or your pre-composition. Okay, now uh, what we'll do next is let's just add some some text. Okay, so I might just rub scroll the playhead up to um, where this finishes. Maybe let's go to the four second mark and I'm going to grab some text and we're going to just add a simple animation preset on it. We're going to export it and be done. Okay, so um, just grab your text tool and select click. Oh, before you start, grab your text tool and over in character. You've got all your options, color, size of your text, different font type and all that. You can muck around with that. Once that's done, all right, let's just go with our, um, get our selection tool back. Now you'll notice you can move it around to wherever you want it. You'll notice when I, I've got a new layer that's been created there. And just go into effect and presets, animation presets. And if you go into text, there's a whole heap of folders in here, um, pre-made 
text animation effects that we can drop, drag and drop on here. I'm just going to go into blurs, uh, blur by word, click, hold and drag it either on there or on the text layer, doesn't matter. And what that's, that's going to do is it's going to create a preset animation for us. So if I hit play now, go to preview and play, there's the text. Okay, and it'll just keep playing through. All right, um, if you wanted to, uh, then if you didn't like that, what you could do is you could go into, you could just Command Z, take the effect off, and then you could go and you could um, choose another one and just play around with one until you find one that you like. And now one more thing before we export, um, you'll just notice that the text layer that I created is on the screen the whole time, and I actually want it to kind of, uh, uh, start about here when everything shifts off the screen. So all you need to do is just uh, move your playhead to where you want it to start, just select that layer, and then if you hover over the end of the layer here and you click, hold and drag it back, it'll be, it will, the layer will start at that point in time, okay? And I might just put that, uh, that blur by word effect back on there. Okay, and then all that's left to do is, um, to export our footage, save your project, and to do that, let's go to File and let's go to Export and let's add it to the render queue. If you've got Adobe Media Encoder, you could do it that way. You've got a lot more options there, but if you don't, let's do it this way. Just click on Lossless and um, go to Format Options and just to change the video codec to actually just make sure. Sorry, you're on QuickTime. Format options, change the codec to um, let's say uh, DV Digital Video 25 PAL. That will do us. Click OK and click OK here. And then just on this blue right in here, click that. This is where it's going to export to. I'm just going to pop it in my documents. Uh, click save and then hit the render button. And then the program After Effects will render out and create all the animation and effect that we effects that we applied and turn it into a .mov movie file. We are done and let's go to our finder and you can have a little, you find out where you saved it to, exported it to, have a little look, double click it. There you have it. Okay.